You're listening to the official podcast of the Salt Lake Bees. Welcome back to the On Deck Circle, and our guest now is a guy that uh, was known throughout baseball as Everyday Eddie, as a relief pitcher for the Minnesota Twins, but I knew him as Every Fifth Day Eddie because he was a starting pitcher for the Salt Lake Buzz our very first year in 1994. Eddie Guardado, and Eddie, great to see you. I, I saw that when you were uh, joining the Angel staff that uh, I was looking forward to a visit from you here. Wow, Steve, I'm glad to see, I haven't seen you in a long time, and we haven't talked in a long time, but I'm glad to be here. Obviously, seeing you, see from familiar faces, but uh, you know, just get, get back, get allowed to be back here in the old stomping grounds where you started as a, a young buck, right? Mm-hmm. I think I haven't had hair then. Right. But, um, you know, <laughs> I got to ask you then. You know, when you came here the other day for the first time, it was probably that '99 exhibition game here. Um, what was your first thought when you walked into the ballpark? Oh, I just walked around to be honest with you, Steve, and uh, trying to figure out what locker was mine. And I did. I was. And I walked around the kitchen, you know, the little kitchen we have. And just it was a good feeling, to be honest with you. And always good back, always good feeling when you have to come back to your roots where things started. You know, like, you know, obviously I was in the minor leagues for the second year of my career. But just being back to familiar faces and, you know, and great people. What was it like yesterday? Because I gave you uh, that scorebook from the very first year. I know you were looking at it, looking at the names, looking at the games. That that had to be fun. It was great, and I appreciate that, by the <laughs> way. Sorry I didn't return it right back to turn it. But anyway, uh, look, just looking at familiar faces through the scorebook, you know, and then – what I got out of the whole thing when I was looking at that is obviously, you know, pitching and all that good stuff. But I've seen, the, you know, I went back to that 94 um, uh, Twins uh, player book and um, Marty Cordova, Steve Stelviak, I mean, Dan Mastaller, mm-hmm. I mean, Brian Rock. We go through the whole list, man. And you know what I got out of all that? They're all good people, man. Mm-hmm. So faces I haven't seen in a while, names I haven't heard in a while. And it was great to see. Of course, uh, as I've mentioned uh, several times, you were the opening day pitcher for our first season in 1994 up in Vancouver. We had to wait a while, though. Back-to-back rainouts. That game that you pitched was the first game of a doubleheader. Right. So look at, look at where we're at now. <laughs> <laughs> Some things, things don't change. <laughs> things haven't changed yet, huh? <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, that's part of baseball, man. What's what's the game called? Adjustments. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously we make adjustments on weather. Obviously we want the weather to be nice and sunny and 80 degrees. But sometimes it don't work that way. Sometimes you got to go out there and just adjust, and, and that's what they have to do today. That was a pretty talented team back in 1994, too. Very talented, very fun team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're a lot of pranksters on that team. Uh, I, I know I can't say that stuff on air, but we had some good times. Mm-hmm. But uh, all good people. And uh, uh, remember Scotty Olger was here with us, and, you know, Phil Roof, my managers, you know, things like that. So all good people, Steve. And uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're around good people, man, it, you, you know, th- things are all great. When it came to pranks, and again, we don't have to talk about them specifically, but who comes to mind are Brett Merriman, Oscar Munoz, and the trainer, Doc Common. Jimmy Snacks. We should call him Snacks. So can I tell you a little prank sure. we did on Jimmy here? You know, Jimmy likes snacks. So when we talk about snacks, we're talking about candy bars. We're talking about crackers, you know, sort of things like that. So, you know, Jimmy talked a lot of stuff, you know, to the players, but it was great stuff, right? So one day we tied him up, and in the locker room we tied him up with uh, uh, some tape, and we put uh, all those candy wrappers because during the whole week of that, prior to doing that, we had it set up. So all the snacks he was eating, like during the game, people would, you know, he'd throw in the trash and we'd get out of the trash. In the locker room, we pick it up. So we had a bag full of snacks. I'm talking Reese's Pizza Cups, Snickers, <laughs> you name it. So we got that, and we tied them up, and we put all those wrappers on them as we were tying them. So I wish I had that picture because he looked like a mummy with just Reese's Pieces Cups, Snackers, everything he ate, and it, it filled him up. I said, look, at this is how much you're eating, you know, so it was good stuff. It really was. Yeah. Uh, so, Eddie, 908 games in your career in the big leagues, most of those uh, out of the bullpen. Of course, you were a starter here. Uh, what was that conversation like when the Twins suggested maybe the bullpen uh, might be better for you? <laughs> well, I, rec- I remember it clearly. Um, 93, my rookie year, then my, I had like 25 starts mm-hmm. underneath my belt. 
maybe I can count two were good. Uh, obviously, we needed a change somewhere there. But obviously, didn't get sent down, which was good, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously, they see something in me, <clears throat> you know, that they wanted to keep. So they put me in the bullpen. And, uh, you know, you as a starter all your career, all your life, you get to the big leagues, uh, you're not good enough to be a starter. We'll butch in the bullpen. You, 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 you kind of think it as a demotion, right? Kind of stings a little mm-hmm. bit, right? Your feelings get hurt, you know. No, no big deal. But I took it as, you know what? They, I could have been easily sent down, mm-hmm. but they kept me there because they saw some, I guess, uh, that I had. I didn't know at the time, right? Mm-hmm. But I just competed, 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 work, keep working, and I went in that bullpen and I took the same mentality that I took as a starter. But I'm doing it every day now, right? As a bullpen guy, because I got a chance to pitch every day. So that, and I and I and I took off with it. And uh, is there any point where oh, this is what I'm going to do? No, it just happened, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was a good thing. Yeah, I was going to say, and it all culminated uh, in 2002, 45 saves to lead the league. That's your career high. And we were talking about 2002 the other day. How many guys from that '94 team and, and throughout that were in that playoff series that eventually got you to the American League Championship Series against the Angels? And the funny thing was, the 50-man rosters for the two teams combined, 26 of them had played here at Salt Lake at one time or another. So that was a lot of fun for me. Oh, I bet, man! Look at that, 26. Mm-hmm. Wow. But you know, you got. Got guys like Percival on the other side, you know, Anderson. I think it was Hosey there, uh, you know. Um, uh, so you got names like that. And, and, and on our side was me, Denny Hawking. Uh, who else was there? Troy, mm-hmm. Marty. Yeah, you know, good people again, good teammates. So we happened to go in 2 in the big leagues playing against each other. Here, you know, we're, we're grown men, but we're also kids. Right. We're grown men in the big leagues, mm-hmm. you know. So that was special. Hey, you did spend some time as a bullpen coach for the Twins, and yeah. now you're a special assistant to, uh, to player development for the Angels. How did that all come about? Well, you know, Perry mm-hmm. uh, Manassian, the GM, and, and, and Joey, uh, the minor league director, uh, gave me a call one day and asked me yeah. if I can help. And I was at home enjoying retirement, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I've known those guys for a while. And uh, um, so, you know, why not help a friend, right? Mm-hmm. So they're good guys. They're trying to do the right thing here with this organization. Uh, trying to t- turn things around. I know they had a lot of work a- ahead of them when they came into the organization, cleaning a lot of things up. So I think we're heading in the right direction, but it's always good to help help people that you care about. What's the best part of your role? Just hanging out with the guys, you know, getting back into the locker room, you know, and, and, and helping these young guys because I was that guy before. I'm trying to, you know, they're trying to be big league ball players, you know. And obviously, Salt Lake is nice, Triple A, but where's our gold? We want to be in the big leagues. We all do, right? Mm-hmm. So it's good that maybe something I might say triggers something to help these guys in, in the mental part because they all have the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just the mental part now that we deal with. So I talk about that a lot and uh, and see, and hopefully it helps guys out in the long run. And we, as we talked about the other day, uh, uh, there's always that great hunger to get to the big leagues for the first right. time. But when you've been there and got sent back, that hunger, I think, is even greater to get back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there, there's two ways you can approach that, right? Mm-hmm. And I think you've seen probably it because uh, you're in a position where you can see guys go up and come back down because they're going to come here, right? So we got to take it two ways. And this is what I'm talking about, about the mental part. Now you get sent down. Things didn't go right. What are we going to do, feel sorry for ourselves? Or are we going to get back on the horse and go to work? Well, that's what we're going to do. Because if we spend time feeling sorry on ourselves or pissed off, then good luck. You know, and and I think I, I find out the guys that, hey, yeah, it, it's not it's not fun. It stings. But I got to get back to work because I want to get back up there because that was a lot of fun. Eddie, great to see you. I know you're going to be back a few times this year. I'll look forward to those visits as well. And, uh, again, uh, great to see every five-day Eddie. Again, great to see you. (laughs) Well, Steve, always good to see you, man. Thank you for having me. All right. That special uh, uh, assistant to the player development for the Angels, Eddie Guardado, the first starting pitcher in Salt Lake Buzz history. Back with the starting lineups after this on the KSL Sports Zone. Beautiful. Thank you.